in September 1983. Two friends near Jacksonville, Florida were shocked to find the body of a man. He lay on his side at the foot of a sand dune. His head showed severe wounds. Investigators from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office quickly responded. They found no identification on the body. The only clues were a broken pool cue and footprints leading to some tire tracks in the sand. Police worked carefully to gather and protect all the evidence. The tire tracks seemed like the most promising clue to lead to the killer. They were lucky to have it. Rain, the slightest breeze, or one false step could destroy the fragile traces. Preserving the tire tracks required particular expertise the very act of making a cast could destroy them. Police called the Jacksonville Regional Crime Laboratory and forensic criminalist Ernest Ham. So the crime scene was processed with these tracks in mind. Uh, the footwear tracks and the tire tracks were photographed. Then we want to make a plaster cast because a plaster cast will give us a true representation, a three-dimensional representation of the object that made it. Care in the pouring was crucial in order to prevent the weight of the plaster from destroying the print. If the evidence were altered, a killer might go free. After the plaster had set, the cast was carefully cleaned. Now, police had a perfect three-dimensional reproduction of the tire tread. It included the gouges and signs of wear that made that tire unique. But millions of tires roll on America's highways today. It seemed impossible for investigators to find the one tire that had made these tracks. They studied the plaster cast noting the ribs and grooves of the tread design. Despite the odds of finding the tire, it offered investigators their best chance to catch the killer. Matching the track with a tire on a suspect's car would be as conclusive in court as a fingerprint. While the police traced the victim's movements, Ham continued his arduous, time-intensive search of the tread guide. Finally, after reviewing thousands of images, he found the single tire that matched the cast. The track at the beach was made by a tire commonly mounted on pickup trucks. Now, police knew what they were looking for though it hardly seemed to advance their investigation. To find one truck out of thousands in the Jacksonville area would be daunting. But then police got a lucky break that saved them hundreds of hours. An officer answering a call about a robbery pulled over a suspicious truck the driver tried to run off, but was soon apprehended and arrested. His name was Gregory Kokel. Police inspected his truck. They found a gun under the seat. Kokel was known to police. He was a suspect in a murder case several years before, though never charged. But his name had come up even more recently. Police had just received an anonymous tip that Kokel had bragged of robbing and killing a man on the beach. The gun retrieved from the truck, a 357 revolver, was the same caliber used to kill Russell. The officer then noticed that the tires seemed to resemble the ones involved in Russell's murder. Until now, solving the case had seemed like a long shot. 
Now, police had the prime suspect and possibly all the evidence to convict him. To make the charges stick, they'd have to link him to the scene of the crime. Police looked to the tires to make that connection. An officer compared Kokel's right front truck tire to a photograph from the tread guide. The way he described it was that the hair stood up on the back of his neck, that he was really seeing what we told him he was going to see. The tire was the brand and model they were looking for. But police were not certain it was the same tire that left its mark at the beach. Ham's work wasn't done. He still had to find the exact section of the tire's tread that had made the print. He scrutinized every inch of the tread, looking for cuts, gouges, and wear that matched the portion captured in plaster. These are the marks and gouges that are put into a tire as you drive it. These will leave what we need for making a positive identification. This makes this tire unique. But every mile driven since the night of the murder put new wear marks on the tire and altered the old ones. Even if Cam had the exact tire in his lab, it might be too late to make the perfect match. A killer could still go free. Jacksonville police were building a murder case on a foundation of sand. Now they needed harder evidence. After careful analysis, Investigators found marks in Gregory Kokel's tire that matched the casting made at the crime scene. But police needed to prove that Kokel himself was there. They hoped Kokel's 357 would provide the smoking gun they needed. If this was the exact gun that fired the fatal bullet, investigators had to prove that Kokel pulled the trigger.